Hey guys, I'm back with another restoration video. Um, I get a ton of awesome amps coming through my shop all the time, but I love to choose the super special ones to archive and film videos of the repairs. Um, and that's exactly why I chose to do this amp, because it's just in immaculate condition and I'll probably never see one in as good of shape as this one is. So without further ado, let me show you this Gibson GA20. I believe it's from 1958. Um, I'll show you guys how I came to that conclusion. Um, but as you can see, it's in absolutely beautiful shape. As you can see, the entire Gibson logo is still here. A lot of the times it's like broken off on one side, but it's super shiny still. This amp has probably been like under its cover and stored very, very well for most of its life. And coming in from the back, we can see the control panel is in as good of shape as the rest of the amp. Super clean, no rust. I mean, it's really awesome. So we've got our instrument volume, our microphone input volume, and our tone control. That's it, super simple. Um, I love how these Gibson sound so much. They're like, some of my favorite amps ever and I'll take the back panel off and show you what's going on under the hood. So it's pretty much all original under here. I mean, even like the tubes are probably all original. They're all RCAs, every single one of them. The pre's, the output and rectifier. We've got a 5Y3, two 6V6 output tubes, and we have three 12AX7s, I believe. Yes, three 12AX7s. And then the speaker is a Jensen P12R. It is the original speaker, I'm like 99% sure. According to this date code, this speaker was manufactured in 1958, which would make sense for the era of this amp. Um, the way to decipher that is the first three digits, 220, are specific to Jensen speakers. The next digit is the last digit of the year it was manufactured. So either 58, 68, etc. But these amps were produced in the 50s. So that's why I'm concluding it's 1958. And then the next two digits are the week of the year. So the speaker was made on the 12th week of 1958. So the repair on this will likely be pretty straightforward. We are going to replace this two-prong cable with a three-prong and that will include doing a little bit of rewiring in the power input section then we will definitely be replacing these filter caps and this bypass cap for the output um, not sure if we're gonna have to replace any coupling caps if they're not leaking any voltage then I will keep them the only other thing we might need to replace is like some plate resistors because uh, these can get noisy over time. But I'm going to start by replacing the power cord and then we'll move on to the filter caps. So these amps are like super easy to work on. As you can see, there's not much going on and you can pretty much access everything from the back of the amp. But in order to replace the power cord and insert a strain relief on the other side of the chassis, I will need to take the chassis out and in doing so, I'll need to be super careful not to pull on these output transformer wires, um, but I think we'll be okay. So to be extra safe and make sure I don't damage any tubes while I'm removing the chassis, I'm just gonna take out the tubes um, because the last thing I wanna do is accidentally crack one while I'm taking the chassis out. Okay, that was a struggle, but um, Thanks to my lovely assistant, we were able to get these output tubes out. They were really, really in there though. Like I said, probably have been in there for the last 60 plus years. The 
Dang, that's a long screw. All right, so we've got just enough clearance to do what we gotta do and change the power cord and then I'm just gonna put the chassis back in. This is Hank, he's learning how to be a shop dog. All right, so I'm gonna start by removing the power cord connections. One which goes to the fuse and the other which goes to the switch. And I'm going to rewire a little bit, which I'll show you guys in a second. Basically, I'm going to install this three-prong cord the same way in terms of installing it through the chassis here and then just tying a knot as a strain relief. So we've got it through and then I like to just tie a little knot here. All right, and then at, that acts as a strain relief, so you can't pull the power cord out of the amp. Um, and then I'm going to also install a little clamp in the cabinet to uh, further retain the power cord. But basically what we're going to do, um, I'm actually going to wire the hot side of the power cord to this end of the fuse. This end of the fuse is going to go over to the power switch and this side of the power transformer is going to stay on the power switch. And then um, the side of the power transformer that we remove from the fuse is going to wire directly to the neutral wire. And then I'm gonna find a good point to ground the ground wire. So let's go. All right, so I'm going to start by removing the power transformer primary from this side of the fuse. My reasoning is say the amp was plugged in uh, and the fuse is blown. Typically, you know, it's kind of known that you should unplug the amp before checking your fuse or taking out your fuse, but if the power transformer hot side was connected to this side of the fuse, when you go to check the fuse and you touch this, say it was like maybe, I don't know, still in there or something, you'd get, you'd feel that 120. So the hot side of the power cord is going to go right here. I know a lot of you guys don't love that I use wire cutters as my wire strippers, but honestly it's how I learned and it's what's very comfortable for me. So I just do it like this. Okay, and now I'm going to run a wire from this side of the fuse to the open side of the power switch. And next, I'm going to hardwire the neutral wire to the other side of this power transformer primary. Okay. 
Got to grab my trusty old heat shrink. I think this size will do. Now always remember to put your heat shrink on before you solder the wires together. There have been <laughs> so many times where I have soldered the wires together and realized I had not put the heat shrink on. So, you know, it's just a little bit of a minor annoyance, but just something to remember. Get that guy out of the way. Sorry guys, um, I know you like when I use my heat gun, but I have my old faithful over here warming up. This, this huge soldering iron was gifted to me by my friend Pat Kaufman over in New York. Um, every tech needs one because they're so great for soldering to the chassis. So basically what I'm doing, I'm just taking a little flathead screwdriver and scraping away at the chassis a little bit because this will make the solder stick a little bit better. And I just kind of scrape in like a crosshatch pattern. And I'm going to start off by just stripping away some of this ground wire. And then I'm going to tin the wire so that it will be easier to stick to the solder. And then I take my trusty old faithful, tin the iron a little bit, and then it takes a second for the chassis to heat up well. You can see how well it solders to the chassis. And then now that I've got that solder there, I'm just going to heat it up this wire that I have tinned. And it's got a super nice tight connection to the chassis. Next thing I'm going to do is replace these two filter capacitors. Um, what I usually do in these situations is just remove these caps entirely and then I will install a terminal strip and just wire in the new capacitors that way. So this cap right here, you can see it's two 10 microfarad caps in one and they're both going to the same spot. So this means there are basically two 10 microfarad caps in parallel running to the same spot. So that equals like 20 microfarad. So I'm gonna just use a 22 microfarad cap for that. And then this cap, um, we have a 20 microfarad and a 10 microfarad. The 20 is the red and the 10 is the yellow. So essentially I need two 20 microfarads and one 10 microfarad filter caps. All right, so I'm just gonna remove these two caps by unscrewing this nut right here. So I'm going to start with this cap, this 20 microfarad at 450. I'm gonna use my trusty 22 at 500 F and T. And basically, I mean, I like to just cut them out 
because then you can see exactly where the wires go. So this cap was an Astron. Again, it was two 10 microfarads connected together, so essentially 20 microfarad at 450. Astrons are made in Newark, New Jersey. So it looks like the grounding point is right here, and that's where like the power transformer center tap is grounded. That's where the output tube cathode resistor is grounded. Um, so I'm just gonna ground the cap there also. So what I have decided to do um, is install a terminal strip right here where the original filter caps were secured in. Um, for that first stage of filtering, that 20 microfarad, I'm just gonna get rid of these wires and run a longer wire to this terminal here, which will become the positive terminal. So kind of like this. And then the negative terminal is going to ground right over here where that original cap was grounded, which is right here on the tube socket. Kind of hard to see, there's a lot of wires, but it's basically where this black wire is coming from. Um, so that's gonna kind of roughly be there, and then the other two caps will be in that area, but I'll cross that bridge in a moment. So I'm just gonna start by getting rid of these red wires here. And then I'm just going to add some heat shrink on the capacitor leads to ensure that they do not short against anything. And for good measure, I'm also going to just put a little dab of silicone glue on the back of this cap to keep it in place. All right, so we got this cap secured in here. All right, and then we're gonna do these caps next. Um, these are our two separate caps. We got a 20 and a 10. Cut those out and cut out the negative. And then we're gonna do similar here. We're going to um, hook up the positive leads to the terminal strip and then probably just ground the caps here uh, where they were originally grounded. This was a sprague cap. We've got the red is 20 microfarad, the yellow was 10. So we're gonna hook the red one here, the yellow one here, and install the individual caps. So I think I want to put the 20 microfarad cap here, right here about, and then ground that right there.
So I'm probably going to ground this filter cap right here. Um, it just makes a little bit more sense in terms of the layout. And I'm just going to hope that there's no ground loops. Um, if there are, we'll tackle that, but this grounding scheme should be fine. So now we've got these three main filter caps installed and really the last of the preliminary work is going to be to replace this bypass cap for the output tube, um, tubes I mean, and then we're going to give it a test after like a basic service and stuff too. But um, yeah, that, I mean the main issue, I'm, I totally forgot to say this at the beginning, but the main issue was a bad filter cap. The amp was making this crazy loud buzz when you first turn it on. Um, so that should totally be fixed by replacing the filter caps. But it's always a good idea to replace the bypass cap for the output tubes cathodes just for reliability because these are cathode biased. All right, so I've got this trusty sprig cap to replace this. Well, I'm going to reuse this uh, varnish cloth covering or whatever you want to call it. Just getting a little frayed parts off. And it looks so cute on this spray cap. So cute. Okay. I mean, I can even really cut this shorter. I'm going to. We don't need all that leg room. All right, so the positive end goes on to the cathode, which is pin eight of a six V six and a six L six. Fun fact, I'm sure a lot of you know, but a six V six and a six L six share the same tube pinout. Alright, so now we've got all the electrolytic caps replaced. I'm going to go ahead and clean these pots and jacks and tube sockets. And then we are going to test it out and see if there's any other noise issues. If not, then I'm going to call it done. When cleaning jacks, the important part is to get this little area um, where the jack shorts, and that is because if there's dirt in there, um, it can cause noise. If there's nothing plugged in, it could cause an intermittent connection, etc. So it's important, it's important to get that contact and work that a little bit. The last thing I'm going to do is spray the preamp tube sockets. These get super noisy notoriously and will cause noise in the signal.
I also like to go through and tighten these sockets. Um, I won't really show that on camera because that's kind of tedious, but it's important to do that as well as tighten the output and rectifier tube sockets. Um, but when I was doing my initial testing, it seemed like all of the tubes were functioning. So I'm hoping that we can just leave them in. I mean, it definitely seems like this amp has not had a ton of playing time. Um, just based on like how the tubes look, how everything else looks. So I'm just going to hope that we can maintain the original tubes in there because it's always such a treat to be able to do that. These really go in there pretty tight, which is great. All right, so that is all the preliminary work that I'm going to do for now. So let's test it out. All right, so as you just heard, there is a bit of an uneven crackling happening in the background. Um, and this is even with both volume controls turned down. So, um, my first guess was that it is the phase inverter tube because when you pull this tube that noise goes away um, i did sub in a new tube and it did not make a difference so the first thing that i'm going to try to replace um, that is usually the likely um that is usually the likely culprit is the plate resistors so those are connected to pins one and six. So in this case, it's these two 220K resistors. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace those and see if that helps. So now all we can hear in the background is the mild hum of the power transformer. Um, the crackle is totally gone now, so I replaced the two 220K resistors. Um, those are the plate resistors for the phase inverter. And the crackle was still there, so then my next order of operation would be the cathode resistor. So I replaced that 1K cathode resistor, and the buzz totally went away, or the crackle, rather. Um, Crackle and hiss is gone, so the amp is super quiet now. And that is the last issue that I had to resolve, so I'll demonstrate this amp for you. Oh yes, one more thing I forgot to mention is none of these Astron coupling caps are leaky, so they're all staying in, which is super awesome.